All right, so let's just drill a little farther down into uh, the eye and how it actually processes visual information. Uh, we already saw that, that light is coming in this direction uh, through the cornea and down through the pupil, and then it gets magnified and sent to the back of the retina. Um, and this area uh, back here is where it's filled with rods and cones and so forth. What I want to do is take this box and blow it up and look over in the bottom right here at the various component parts. Uh, we process information at progressively more and more abstract levels. The information from the retinas, uh, 130 million rods and cones, is received and transmitted by a million or so ganglion cells whose axons um, make up the optic nerve. So when you look at it here, uh, you see this area uh, is where the uh, retina is, and it's made up of a layer. All of this area down here um, is, is blood vessels and so forth. But the, the retina has this outer surface, which is made up of all the nerve cells and so forth. But the light comes through, hits the rods and cones, which are, uh, like I mentioned already, 130 million or so. And they trigger these uh, bipolar cells that then trigger the ganglion cells, which are connected into the optic nerve itself. So when an individual ganglion cell registers information in their region, uh, at the axons um, of the visual field, they send signals to the occipital lobe uh, visual cortex. And so in a sense, the light comes down here, is registered, and then sent the signal itself is sent back up in this direction through the bipolar cells that are picking up the signal off of the rods and cones um, and then to the ganglion cells beyond that. Uh, the, in the cortex itself, and we don't have that to look at here, so we've got uh, rods and cones that are part of the uh, interior of the um, uh, retina, and, and that's really where light is um, registered, and light registered <clears throat> and then from there, the stimulation that comes out of the rods and cones uh, are registered in the bipolar cells, and we call them bipolar because, not because they have huge mood swings, but because they are connected in two places. Um, they are connected to the ganglion cells on one side um, in uh, two opposite poles. Um, so essentially on one end they are connected to the ganglion cells and um, <clears throat> on the other end they are connected to uh, the uh, rods, to a rod or rods and cones. So that's why we have the, the word bipolar, this whole area down here that um, is, is sectioned off in a sense is what you will see if you get down close enough is that these are are um, triggering the interaction of these bipolar cells that then send the data that way and they're they're uh, in a sense a transmitting cell it, it would be another way to kind of look at it uh, because they transmit the signal from uh, the uh, rods and cones to the ganglion cells themselves um, and then, of course, the ganglion cells, which then congregate um, into what we now refer to as the optic nerve. The, um, the, how, the, the, then the question is, is with all of this raw data, what happens to it and when it comes up? Uh, through the optic nerve and what we have in the uh, cerebral cortex or uh, the visual cortex I should say is something that we refer to as feature detectors and based on the data that comes from whoops, detectors 
uh, based on the information that comes from these feature detectors or from the, the rods and cones and the, and the uh, information coming from them, they begin to sift through the data to detect a, um, uh, a pattern. And that's where the perception actually comes into play and becomes more and more sophisticated as time goes along. So if you imagine for a minute, if you're just uh, uh, registering the box like this, then you're going to have ganglion cells uh, or feature detectors in the brain that are processing the data that comes from different uh, parts of this box, not to mention the empty space within it, and uh, each angle of the, the, the line that's drawn. And imagine for a minute, uh, for example, which is really awful, is, to, is translating my uh, writing which I get regular feedback about how bad it is. So it, there are times it gets really good, and sometimes when I get really in a hurry, it gets worse. Um, but you can read bipolar cells here. But um, think about all the features that are part of my writing or anyone else's writing, how different it is from each other, and yet we're still able to detect um, a similar word. Um, you might have somebody, for example, who writes only in capital letters, or somebody who mixes letters, um, or someone who is uh, really, and I don't think I can even do this very well, is who is very precise in their letters. You see, based on all of these differences, these feature detectors pick up on uh, each of them and make sense of them and interpret them accordingly. Um, they become more and more uh, sophisticated in uh, registering various aspects of it. And we also have teams of cells, which are often referred to uh, uh, as super cells or super cell clusters that uh, are get even more sophisticated in um, processing the data as it comes in more and more uh, abstract form. And that's very much a part of how this whole thing comes together. Uh, the sub-dimensions of vision, for example, color, movement, depth, form, are processed in, by neural teams working together separately and simultaneously, and, and our visual perception is a classic example of parallel processing. All of this is going on all at the same time and all in a um, coordinated manner. And that is really the remarkable nature of our uh, visual information processing.